excited about the opportunity to create something that's amazing. And I would love to get to know you. I mean, obviously with a, a larger group like this, it's difficult to go around the room, but I just love reading a bit about you in the chat window so I can see uh, Mustafa uh, from, uh, you know, from Citibank Limited. Nice to meet you too. Uh, Mentor Ashif, uh, so great to meet you uh, as well. And uh, just going down the chat window, so many. And so we want to talk today about purpose. And uh, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. I'm going to give you a, a relatively short presentation. You can see uh, on the screen there uh, what we're going to be talking about. And then what I want to do is, without a doubt, open it up for some discussion and some comments and questions. I noticed that uh, Coach uh, uh, Camrul is uh, sharing this on, um, on uh, Facebook, on his uh, page. And I would encourage you as well uh, to, uh, if you can, uh, go ahead and share it as well so that we can increase our reach. And uh, of course, we can uh, reach more people. Not everybody's always able to uh, you know, engage in something like this. And so right now, that's what I'm doing. So just give me a moment. I'm going to share this, uh, if you can imagine, on my own page here. And uh, I just want to see it. <clears throat> and then I want to share it, uh, you know, if I can on my own page, there we go. So, uh, so that all of uh, my uh, audience here can see it and uh, on some of my pages as well. So if I seem a little distracted, that's what I'm doing. Uh, but hey, there's no time like the present. <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, I, hope, uh, I hope that many will tune in and uh, I'm so grateful. I, I'm uh, so grateful for that, uh, for the opportunity to be with you uh, today and to uh, connect. And I think that today will be something that is uh, quite powerful for many. So a couple of things that I want to do as we begin here today, uh, and, uh, you know, probably most important is, uh, you know, and I'm a, I'm a big person who believes in family. And so I hope you don't mind if I indulge myself and just talk a little bit about my family. I really believe that uh, without family, especially as men, uh, we are nothing. And I think it's important for us to always remind ourselves of our family. And so there's my beautiful wife. Uh, how many of you would agree my wife is beautiful and I'm very blessed that way. Uh, a beautiful wife is a good thing. <laughs> I'd rather have a, a beautiful wife than a wife who wasn't beautiful. Uh, but beauty is always in the eye of the beholder. And uh, what so uh, uh, impressed me about my wife, uh, she's from the Philippines. So actually uh, from uh, your part of the world, essentially, you know, Southeast Asia. Uh, but she's been here in Canada for many years. Uh, she's an IT professional. Uh, and, uh, you know, she's one of the smartest people I've ever met. And, and honestly, in all fairness, before I was attracted, you know, physically, I actually really was attracted to her mind and the way she thinks and the ambition and the purpose that she has. Uh, we have a beautiful daughter. Uh, you can see our daughter there together. Uh, her name is Jasmine. And uh, that picture on the right was from my, uh, my 21st birthday. <laughs> just joking. I'm a little older than 21, uh, but I had a birthday party actually just last week, and it was a lot of fun uh, to get together with family and friends. And, uh, you know, we live uh, uh, in, in a city called Calgary, so I don't know if you know uh, Canada very well, and, and if you don't, it's, it's okay. Uh, we would be about a 12 or 14 hour flight from Bangladesh if you were flying direct. I'm not sure if you can. Uh, you might have to go through South Korea or uh, Tokyo or perhaps India. But, um, you know, we um, are on the west side of Canada, and uh, that, that beautiful mountain range that's in the picture behind us, that is about an hour away from where we live. So we live in a, a beautiful part of the world, and I think every day we, we really just remind ourselves of how blessed we truly are. Uh, and, you know, we are in a pandemic, and how many of you would agree with me when I say that the pandemic has impacted every one of us globally? I mean, this has been an incredible time of change and transition. Um, but, you know, in, in spite of the pandemic, our business here has continued to flourish and thrive. And I want to tell you uh, why. You know, I remember, uh, you know, on March 15th, I went into the shower. And uh, that's kind of what I do in the morning before I go to the office. And, I, you know, of course, I want to clean myself up so that I look as good as I can. <laughs> How many of you know, some days uh, you, you do better than others. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I just had heard on the news here in Canada that we were going into lockdown. This was March 15th of 2020. 
And as I got into that shower, my heart sank. And the reason my heart sank was because we were going into lockdown and I was nervous. I was nervous about the impact on our business because I have employees and people who work for me. I also uh, was nervous and, and, and not very happy because my daughter uh, was in uh, her first year of school and they were canceling school. And I wasn't very happy about that. And, uh, and I remember going into the shower and feeling a little bit sorry for myself and a little discouraged, wondering, you know, how are we gonna survive? And uh, as I was in that shower for about a minute, feeling down, feeling depressed, you know, I heard the voice of God and I don't want to uh, weird you out, uh, but I heard God's voice speak to me very clearly and inside my soul, in my heart. And the voice said, uh, why are you nervous? Why are you afraid? Uh, have I not given you a platform? And I started thinking about that and, and, and the voice continued and said, if, if you will take this pandemic as an opportunity to serve people like you never have before, if you'll take this, this pandemic as an opportunity to give to others like you never have before, then I will take care of you. Now, just so you know, I've always been a giver, always uh, given you know, tens of thousands of dollars every year to charity and to lots of causes and help countless people, countless thousands and thousands of people. And so here I was feeling sorry for myself and the voice of God was challenging me to give even more. And that is exactly what me and our team decided to do, that we were going to give. And part of what the voice also said was to stop selling products and to start building community. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. Stop selling products uh, and start building community. And so that's what we did. Uh, since that shower conversation on March 15th of 2020, there has been a, an incredible amount of flourishing. I mean, it's hard to imagine. And if you take a look at uh, that list, and I know you can't read it all, uh, but there's so much that has happened. Our business has grown by leaps and bounds. And uh, as Coach Camrul mentioned, we're just about to launch our certified flourishing coaching, uh, not only in Canada, but in about 10, 12 different countries around the world in four different continents. And uh, that's exciting. And so we truly have a global vision. You know, uh, you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer uh, in the equality of people all over the world. And uh, we love uh, the people of Bangladesh. We love uh, the people of the Philippines, obviously. Uh, we love the people of, of Hong Kong and China. We love the people of India. Uh, we love uh, the people in Africa. We love the people in Canada and the United States. And we're expanding into all of these places in October and the reason we're doing that is because we believe that every single person should flourish and should thrive. And so today, we want to talk about purpose. And, uh, you know, I, I want to just ask a question, and, and it's a simple one, and I want you to respond, if you don't mind, in the chat window. And the question that I have for you is this, and, and you just have to answer it yes or no, and it's this, do you have a clear sense of your purpose? And if the answer to that is yes, then please put that in the chat window. And if the answer is no, then put that in there as well, because there's no judgment here. If you're not clear on your purpose, I can promise you uh, by the end of this session, you'll be a little more clear than you are right now. But I just want to see some engagement here in that chat window. And I want to hear if you've, if you've got that sense of purpose. Why? Because Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life. Okay, so the first day that's most important is the day that you were born, <laughs> right? You showed up and, uh, you know, you were crying and everyone else was rejoicing, uh, right? Because they were happy that you were here. Uh, but the second day that's most important is the day that you discover why. And how many of you know that there are many, many people who go through the entirety of their lives trying to figure out why they were born, trying to figure out what their purpose is? And I can tell you that that is a terrible way to live because you can find your purpose and your purpose can change your whole life. Your purpose can literally transform your destiny. And when you have a sense of your purpose, it can absolutely transform your existence. And I appreciate the, the answers in the chat window. I, I'm seeing lots of yeses and I'm seeing lots of noes. And so I appreciate your honesty. Now, you know, another quote that I want to share is, is from Napoleon Hill. Why is purpose so important? Well, what Napoleon Hill said 
and this is critical, is that there is one quality which one must possess to win. And notice uh, he didn't say, uh, uh, you know, good looks, okay? Uh, he didn't say nice clothes. Uh, he didn't even say a great education. Uh, what Napoleon Hill said is that you need to have definiteness of purpose and the knowledge of what you want and a burning desire to possess it. I'm telling you what, if you want to be unstoppable, then you've got to know your purpose, okay? If you want to be unstoppable, then you have to have a clear sense of direction within your life. Isn't it amazing that your success is not dependent on how you look? Your success is not dependent on the letters behind your name. Your success is not dependent on the amount of money that's in your bank account. Your success is dependent on you stepping into your purpose and being 100% focused on that. You know, Viktor Frankl said this, that life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by a lack of meaning and purpose, okay? So, you know, we all go through adversity. We all go through suffering. We all go through hardship. How many of you know that suffering and adversity and hardship is a part of life? How many of you are with me on that, right? I mean, we haven't yet found a way to completely eliminate suffering and hardship. And I want to tell you here today that you can step out of suffering by stepping into meaning. Uh, even if the suffering is still going on, and even if you're still in a place where you're struggling somewhat, I can tell you that there's so much power in purpose, okay? And that power and purpose is the kind of capacity that you and I and all of us have that can help us to step into a whole new reality. You know, and I want to say this also, Dr. Miles Monroe said that purpose is the master of motivation. I love that. And the mother of commitment. All right. It's the source of enthusiasm and it's the womb of perseverance. Purpose gives birth to hope and it instills passion to act. It's the common denominator that gives every creature an element of distinction. I'll tell you what, without your purpose, you're just another face in the crowd. Without your purpose, I'll tell you what, you're just another person waiting for someone to come along and fix your problem, fix your situation, fix your relationship, fix your finances. But the moment you step into purpose, everything begins to change in your life. And as I stood in that shower that day, feeling a little discouraged, I knew that the only solution was to be 100% focused on my purpose. That if I could focus on my purpose, my entire reality would begin to change. Listen to me, a life or business without purpose is a life or business without perseverance. And why do you need perseverance? Because perseverance is that capacity to keep on keeping on in spite of every obstacle that you face and in spite of every challenge that you're enduring. And so what do we wanna do? We wanna be people who are purposeful, okay? And I'll tell you the saddest place on earth, and I want you to think about this for a moment because I'm not sure exactly how you know burial and death works in Bangladesh, uh, but I can tell you in, in Canada and in much of the world, we have these things called cemeteries. And these are where people who, are, uh, who pass away uh, are buried. And uh, you know we, we set up nice little tombstones and we celebrate their life. And that's a good thing. But I'll tell you, to me, the saddest place on earth is the local cemetery. It's the local gravesite. Why? Because think of all the unsung songs. Think of all the uninvented inventions. Think of all the businesses where somebody had a dream and somebody had a vision, but they never fulfilled it. Think of all of those ideas that people carried to their death with them because they were too afraid or too distracted to act and to step into their purpose. And so that's why we want to talk about purpose. I'll tell you what, focusing leads to flourishing. And so I want to just talk about four simple things today, really simple things. The first, I want to talk about the story of flourishing. We hear about this word flourishing. What does it mean? And then I want to talk about the science behind it. Number three, I want to talk about the sociology of flourishing. And then number four, we're going to spend some time talking about the strategies for flourishing. Okay, so let's just get through this together. Are you getting something out of this here today? If you are, you can just nod your head or you can say yes in the chat window. 
let's go ahead and start by talking about the story of flourishing, okay? The first thing that I want to say is that many of us need to unlearn our limitations, okay? So, so we, we, we often have the, the biggest prison in our mind. Are you still there? You know, you may be walking free today in your physical body, but you may not be walking free in your mind. And so I think that a lot of us were raised, sometimes it was through the news media, sometimes it may have been through our family, sometimes it may have been through our teachers, sometimes through our culture, where we have all of these learned limitations, and we haven't yet learned our possibilities. So I want to encourage you today to unlearn your limitations, and I want to encourage you today to begin to think about your life through the lens of possibility, okay? So, so here's the question. Why do some people flourish while others do not? I think this is a really important question. When you look around, you probably have some friends. Their business is flourishing. Their life is flourishing. Their relationships are flourishing. Their leadership is flourishing. Why are they flourishing? And probably some of you look around and you might see others who aren't. And so you start to ask this question. Now, for me, I'll tell you what Zig Ziglar said, you were not born a winner. You were not born a loser, but you were born a chooser. <laughs> okay, I love that because here in Canada, you know, we have some people and they tell themselves a story. Maybe it's not this way in Bangladesh, but in Canada, they tell themselves a story that, oh, I was born you know, a loser. I was born into the wrong family. I was born without money. I was born into a hard situation. Listen, we were all born into our situation. It is what it is. Now, what you make of it, how many of you are with me when I say is 100% up to you. You have the opportunity to go out there and be a chooser, and you can choose life or death. You can choose hope or discouragement. You can choose possibility, or you can choose limitation. And yes, you can choose poverty, or you can choose abundance. You can choose success, or you can choose a life of languishing. And what I want to encourage you to think about is that, and let me tell you, this is not an academic question for me. You know, and where, where I kind of grew up in, in my situation, and that's a picture of my uh, beautiful mother, uh, when, when I was born, you can see her there in the bottom right-hand corner, and uh, my brother and I, I can tell you that, that we were raised in a, in a very difficult situation, and, and yet as I got older, there was a part of me that felt sorry for myself for the situation that I had ra been raised in, but that didn't last for very long because I realized that whatever situation I had, I could create something great out of my situation. Now, you could sit down and you could say, well, your situation is worse than mine. And maybe it was, and maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe my situation was worse than yours because it's really all in the eyes of the person who's experiencing it. And I think we always need to honor people for their story and for their, their subjective experience. I certainly honor everyone's subjective experience. But here's the thing I've discovered. No matter what your experience, in other words, no matter what you've come from, you have an opportunity to choose where you're going. Okay, so, so, so I can spend a lot of time regretting the things that I came from, or what I can do is I can use my story and my experience to educate a new reality within my life. So here's the question. What does it mean actually to flourish? What does that mean? Well, the word flourishing actually, in the simplest terms, really, it's really quite simple. It means to, and I love this, to feel good and to function well. Now, I've had times in my life where I felt good, but I didn't function well, <laughs> okay? I've had other times in my life where I functioned well, but I didn't feel good. You know, flourishing is, is both of these things. Are you still there? So, so not only do I feel good, but I also function well. So I have mental health. I have emotional health. I have physical health, but I also have functional health. My, my career is working. My, my business is working. My relationships are working. 
And you know, there's there's you know this this idea of flourishing is is not a mystery. Why some people flourish and one and some don't. So so I want to talk a little bit about the science of flourishing. Now, Dr. Wayne Hammond, who is is one of our our uh, he is our our lead advisor. He is a an expert on the science of flourishing. He's a clinical psychologist. He's been uh, you know teaching in universities for several decades uh, here in Canada, and he will tell you that flourishing is a heightened state of thriving. It's positive well-being and purposeful performance characterized by a growth aptitude, resilience capacity, and strength-based competencies. Okay, so basically, that's a, a long definition to say that when you're flourishing, you're thriving. You have a positive sense of well-being, and you, you operate very purposefully. So you're not just random. You know, you're not just living your life, doing your thing, you know, trying to make something go here or there, but, the, but that you're actually focused on something. And that's what makes you unstoppable. Now, there are 10 core competencies for flourishing. And you can see those on the screen. I don't have time to go through them in detail, but, but people who flourish, they are personally empowered. How many of you know that? Okay, so, so they're, they're not trying to get someone else to empower them. They, they, they can start their own motor, okay? They're personally empowered. Now, secondly, that they're personally aware. And that means that they have self-awareness, right? They're, they're in touch with their, their, themselves, their feelings, their thinking. Number three, they have emotional and social intelligence. So flourishing is not just about me or it's not just about you, but it's also about how we relate with ourselves and how we relate with people around us. Number four, flourishing is leadership and courage. Boy, this one is so important. How many of you know it takes courage to step out? It takes courage to fulfill your dream. It takes courage to be all that you can be. It takes courage to, 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 to operate in the middle of a pandemic and still make a difference. Number five, being innovative and entrepreneurial. That's one of the characteristics of those who flourish. Number six is, is resilience and a growth mindset. You know, that's the idea that, that I'm going to have the grit to keep on going, even when times are tough. Number seven is that you're motivated. You're a self-directed learner. I love that. You know, so many times people want somebody to teach them everything, you know, just take me by the hand and show me everything, you know, and yet oftentimes what we need to do in order to thrive is to be that sort of motivated, self-directed learner. Number eight is integrity. How many of you agree with me that we could use more integrity today, right? Okay, this is so important, you know, that we operate with a sense of morality, that we operate with a sense of character, that we're honest, that we're fair, that we're respectful, that we operate under good values. Number nine is interpersonal and collaborative skills. And then number 10 is that you're an effective problem solver. Now, those are the 10 core competencies of people who flourish. And when these 10 factors work together, it's just like all of the different instruments in a symphony. I don't know if you've ever heard a symphony before or a really good band, a music band. You've got all these different instruments playing and, and they can all play something on their own. But when you bring them all together, they create the most beautiful sound that can bring tears to your eyes and that can move your soul and that's literally what these 10 core competencies are like. When they are all operating together in your life, they produce this symphony in you of, of a person who's flourishing and you're thriving. And it's not about how much you have, but it's about who you are. Okay, does that make sense, right? It's not about you know, the, the identity that you have, but it's about literally who you are in the core of your being, in the core of your soul. So We've looked at the story of flourishing. We spent a little bit of time on the, the science. Now what I want to talk for just a moment about is the sociology of flourishing. Now, sociology really means our social connections. Now, according to Dr. George Vallant, he was the director of the, the adults, uh, sorry, the Harvard study of adult development, which is the longest running study of mental health that has ever been conducted in history. Here's what he said. The only thing that really matters in life are your relationships to other people. And that's why I'm so grateful to be with you all here today, because our capacity to flourish and thrive 
is often about who we associate with. And if you want to flourish and thrive, how many of you know you've got to get around the right people? There are some people who will drag you down. How many have ever had friends like that? Am I the only one who's ever had a friend like that? You know, somebody who wanted to pull you down. You know, we call it here in Canada, the crab syndrome. How many of you have heard of the crab syndrome before? And, uh, you know, it's this idea, uh, I guess, how they cook crabs. It's not very nice, but it is what it is. They put them in a, a pot of boiling water. And because these, these crabs, you know, have, have claws, they could actually climb out and, and save themselves. But when one crab tries to climb out of the pot of boiling water, the other crabs pull him back. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, if we're going to die, we're all going to die together. Do you know what I'm saying? We're not going to let you escape. And, and, and sometimes we have friends who are like that. You know, we're going to pull you down. We're going to gossip about you. We're going to judge you. We're going to say nasty things about you. We don't want you to succeed. We don't want you to thrive. Why? Because, because, because it challenges us. Over here in, in Canada, in the United States, there's so much of the politics of resentment. We see that where people are angry that they don't have something that they feel like they should get. Well, hey, why, why not go get it then? <laughs> right? Why are you sitting around complaining to the government, wanting the government to fix your problems when you can make something happen? But the crab mentality is, is very happy to pull everybody down to its level rather than elevate people up. And I can tell you that it's so critical in your life to surround yourself with the right people. We do not flourish alone. There's a social component to flourishing. It's so important that we tap into that social component. We can't thrive by ourselves. We thrive, and this is so important as part of our community. And so we've talked about the story of flourishing. We've talked about the science. We've talked about the sociology. Now I wanna talk about the strategy, how? Can I flourish? Because your birthright is to flourish. And I would encourage you uh, to, to say that as your mantra every day. Stop telling yourself a story that you can't and start telling yourself a story that you can. How many of you with me? Stop telling yourself that you don't deserve it and start telling yourself that you do deserve it and that that's your birthright and that you're going to tap into it. And so let's talk about the how. You know, a, a strategy is a plan of action designed to achieve a major goal. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's really simple. So how are we going to get there? If the goal is to flourish, then what is our plan of action to actually get there? And I think that flourishing is, is, is about, it's just three simple things. And if you're taking notes, I would encourage you to write these down. Number one, flourishing is an inside job. What does that mean? That means that you have got to work on you. We all have parts of our thinking and our belief system that hold us back from flourishing. Are you still with me? You know, I, I tell you, I, myself, uh, one of the things that held me back from flourishing was, was what I call a poverty mindset. How many of you have heard of a poverty mindset? Anyone have heard of a poverty mindset? Because I was raised in poverty. I, I, I didn't ever believe that I deserved anything but poverty. And I remember when people started paying me very well for my coaching and for my speaking and for my professional expertise, I almost felt guilty. <laughs> you know, I felt guilty for uh, taking money because of a poverty mindset. And, and that mindset, had I allowed it to continue, would have held me back for a long time <clears throat> unless I shifted that mindset. Now, you might have a mindset of insecurity. You might have a mindset of inferiority. You might have a mindset of anxiety and worry and fear, but, but you will not flourish until you own your inner space because where the mind goes, the man or woman follows. Okay, so if you want to change your life, then you need to change your thinking. Are you still there? If you want to change your destiny, then you've got to change what happens right here. The second thing about flourishing, the second strategy is that flourishing is an outside job. So it starts within, but then secondly, you need to get around people who inspire you and who challenge you. So, you know, people like Coach Kem Rule and people, many of the people who are on this call, as much as you can, you need to get around those who will push you higher. 
That's what's really important. If you look around and everyone in your friend circle is at your level or lower, then you need to make sure. And when I say lower, I'm not talking income or class. I'm talking mindset. I'm talking about the way that they think. And you've got to surround yourself with people who have thought things that you've never thought of, who have built businesses that you've never built, who have created amazing things that you've never created. Why? Because if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always gotten. And so you need to start doing new things and surrounding yourself with new people. Here's the next thing. Flourishing is a B-side job. Yeah. So first is inside. Second is outside. And then the third is who is walking Hola. alongside? You need a coach. No. You need coaches. You need trainers. You need mentors. You need people who have the capacity to take you to that higher level. I'll tell you what, your potential is about your partners. Your future is about your friends. Your completion demands collaboration. And this is so true. The dream requires a team. I'll tell you what, we only truly flourish in connection with others because there's triumph in the tribe. And you know, Coach Camrul, I know he'll be talking about this more as time goes on, but you know, we are launching our certified flourishing coach training uh, in, in Bangladesh. Uh, we're hoping in October. And, uh, you know, Coach Camrul is our representative there. And what is so exciting is that you will, if you're interested, have an opportunity to become certified as a flourishing coach. You will be certified in helping people, leaders, and entrepreneurs and businesses learn the secrets for how they can flourish and how they can truly th thrive. And so in the meantime, you can go to certifiedflourishingcoach.com and you can find some information right there. But let me tell you, uh, this could be the thing that takes you to that next level that you've been looking for. So I hope that this talk has been helpful to you here today. And I would love, very much love to, uh, you know, take any comments or questions that you may have. And so on that note, I'll just uh, turn it back over to Coach Camrul and then we'll sort of see uh, what he has to say in terms of the direction. And please, if you can, I'd love for you to turn on your camera if you have a question. And I'm going to take a screenshot here soon. And I'd love to see your lovely faces because you guys are all beautiful. So there we go. Thank you. What was that? Hey, hello, tri tribe. What was that? I thought it is fire, right? Did you see? Did you feel it? Right, let's put a, a big hands to A, right? Wow, wow. Amazing, so amazing, amazing. So I think it's all about you. So please feel free to jump into and ask questions because he's a team, right? You know, all over the world, I got people, I got connections and I met people, you know, US to Canada, to America, to Europe. So I find, you know, A, you have noticed, right? His way, his delivery, he's, he's uh, you know, what should I say? A supernatural speaker, a power, presenter, amazing, flourisher, and help you to flourish. So do not miss the chance to ask him direct. It's over to you, all of you, please. Anyone, so it's a chance and opportunity for you. Let's see. I was hearing a baby wants to ask you some question. He was trying <laughs> to ask you. Love it, <laughs> love okay. it. So who is the one? So please, I'm waiting to. Uh... Um, hello, uh, my name is Robius Sunny. Um, I'm based in Dhaka, working in a multinational company as a fabric manager. Uh, I have one question for um, uh, Abby Brown. Uh, not sure if I spell it correctly, if I pronounce hey. it. Yeah, A. Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I was um, overwhelmed to see your natural, uh, your, uh, the way you were talking without any hesitation, any, uh, the you were talking is more than even, you know, excellent. It's so much confidence. So I just wanted to uh, have a secret from you how you got this much of confidence? I mean, how you talk without any hesitation? 
Uh, that's a great that's a great question and uh thank you for your kind words and and by the way uh my wife is from the philippines and uh so i when i go to the philippines and i've been there many times uh, everybody calls me abe and it's the funniest thing and and so for for many many years i would just i would try to correct them uh, i would say no it's abe and uh, and then the next person i uh, oh okay abe nice to meet you oh no no it's abe no abe so when I go to the Philippines, I just rename myself Abe because there's a hundred million <laughs> Filipinos and only one of me. And uh, so, you know, it's okay. You can call me Abe or Abe, uh, whatever you prefer. But, um, you know, speaking, I think it's, you know, talking about purpose, right? Um, for me, you know, I was actually raised in a, a pretty abusive environment and didn't really have uh, any reference point. But I remember even as a child, six, uh, seven years old, having dreams of, of, of me speaking to large crowds of people, thousands of people. And I had never even been to an event like that before. I'd never seen anything like that on television, but it was almost like God was putting that in me. Uh, and uh, I think that, that, that from that time, I've had a passion for it. I will tell you that I've had a lot of failures as a speaker. <laughs> speaking fails, I call them, uh, where I've made mistakes or I've put my foot in my mouth or I've been um, you know, um, you know, not confident. Uh, what I would say to you, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Robius, is to to keep practicing and uh, to 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 never stop, uh, to never say no to an opportunity. Uh, the other thing that I would say is, in our flourishing community, and uh, Coach Camrul, in time, will be sharing some of this. But we have great courses on public speaking, so we teach. Um, classes on public speaking. Uh, one is called Elevate EST, which is exceptional speaker training. And uh, those are, are real change agents. Because here's what I've discovered about speaking. You can learn the technique, but you need a breakthrough mentally and, and emotionally. So the psychological breakthrough is critical uh, because what's really holding you back is your fear. You know, you already know what to talk about. I mean, we talk all the time. So communication is part of the human experience. But if your fear is overwhelming, you will struggle. And so, you know, maybe maybe take a class like that. And I can see Heather. Heather's uh, one of our community here in Calgary. And, uh, you know, she uh, has been to Elevate EST and, and, of course, uh, is talking about it. And it's true. It's It's quite impactful. So... Yeah, that's great. I'd love to see if there's uh, any other questions. Right. Thank you. So uh, I see Heather has, uh, has has put some comment. Also, I'm a student of A. Brown, and his teaching has changed my life for the good. Right. Heather, if you want to, I mean, she's my good friend. You know, we became very good friend. You know, <laughs> we were often talking, and I found her really, you know, very warm-hearted, you know, uh, a lady who actually very eager to learn and also help. All right, so if Hither wants to say a few words, uh, uh, I'm not sure because I think she's driving, she's an out, way out, she just told okay. me. If anyone wants to share, right, uh, my mentor, Dr. Asif, uh, he's a very senior fellow in a country. Would you like, please? Uh, uh, and also Hither, right, and feel free, both. Okay, thank you. Thank you, speaker. Uh, thank you, Coach Kamru. Uh, I have found some interesting uh, about your presentation. Uh, that is uh, very concise, very clear, very methodical. And you have proved that time is not factor. Uh, you just uh, take 25 to 30 minutes and you clear our mind. And your topic is very interesting, flourishing. Yes, we are all want to flourish. That is very important. And what I can say is, you know that I am associated with ICF, IAC, so uh, for long. And I'm also a consultant uh, uh, with an American company for five years. But what does it mean? The meaning is your attitude is so humble, so pure. And that actually touched the heart of the common people. What is our problem? Our ego, our what, what we want to show to others, that is not important. We have to feel their heart. We have to touch their heart. That actually you. 
So I am sure Coach Kamrul has found the right gym for Bangladesh. And I'm sure I am supporting you uh, because I want, because I'm in the entrepreneurship field for so long. Uh, you know that 41 years in the corporate field. So wow. this actually helps me to build, uh, to give, not to get. So I'm with you. Uh, uh, so thank you very much for coming, uh, for showing your expertise and sincerity and humbleness to the Bangladeshi audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That a lot, very much, especially coming from you and uh, your, uh, your great uh, stature in the country. And I know you've led for many years and I, I appreciate what you're saying. I, I have a, a lot of respect for ICF and some of the other coach uh, models that are out there. Um, and as Coach Camrul had mentioned, I, I taught and trained uh, many of them uh, myself for many years. The reason that we've gone in this direction, and I really believe that as coaching itself has evolved, every industry evolves, you know, um, we, uh, we, we're seeing a, an increasing focus in coaching now a lot more towards flourishing. And I think the reason for that is because it's, it's, it's evidence-based. You know, you can actually point to the science in psychology to talk about that. And uh, I think most coaching models are good, but you know, you really couldn't call them evidence-based. And even, even the coaching model that I taught for many years, it, there were some good strategies and techniques there, but you couldn't point to, you know, 40, 50 years of research in, in a field like psychology to back it up. And uh, with Dr. Wayne, and I'd love you to meet him some, uh, at some point, uh, I think you would really enjoy him, Dr. Wayne Hammond, the, uh, the, the evidence basis then becomes very clear. And I, I say to uh, folks, because others have said, well, I've, I'm with ICF or CCF or the coaching network or lots of others, uh, should I do this training? And I say, well, why not? Because the, um, the, 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 the serious professional, as you would know, because you wouldn't get to where you are without that constant learning and development. And, you know, thank you for that. You know, I, I'm, I'm grateful and uh, certainly here uh, to, to support you as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just checking Hither, are they there still? I know you're hanging on the, on the street, <laughs> maybe you're driving or way out. Uh, uh, do you have something to say? Just checking before we move to, you know, to the next question. All right, if, uh, if either is not, then definitely she'll come out and then anyone, right? I see the raised hand. Uh, yes, Mr. Maruf. Yes, thank you so much. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your wonderful session. I uh, really thank you, Abby Brown. Uh, it was amazing. It was fantastic. It was great. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, this is Maru Fasan. Um, I'm a digital marketer. Uh, right now, I'm working in a, um, a largest uh, real estate company in Bangladesh. Uh, I'm in Mahmoud Group as a head of digital marketing. By the way, uh, <clears throat> your uh, session was, the topic was uh, amazing, the flourishing. Uh, so we, we all want to flourish. This is, uh, and talk about some uh, the components actually the, which I ex especially I liked that you talk about the, how actually which people are we are associated with, and you talk about the emotional intelligence. So this is very uh, impressive. So uh, <clears throat> and uh, already Asif sir, my mentor, uh, he, he said that attitude is very important. So we have all to have a positive attitude. Uh, everything is uh, fine. Everything is okay, and everything is uh, great. But uh, one more thing I want to know, uh, um, uh, Mr. Brown. So. But that's my query, actually. In Bangladesh, we are, uh, you know, we are not in uh, comparison to Canada or US or first world country, uh, like, like that. We're in a, uh, you, like, you know, we are, we are treating as a third world country, but we have lots of talents. We have lots of potentiality. We have lots of um, 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 potentiality and lots of future. But uh, you talk about the, uh, how we actually associate with other people, the positive people. So it is very difficult. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm driven like, like a young generation, uh, representing the young, uh, young generation on behalf of young generation. So how young generation we associate with the positive people? So we have lots of positive people. You know, uh, I'm, um, uh, I'm listening a 
some uh, the professional guys, motivational speakers, and some other guys. But uh, three months later, that I found that he has some negativity. So um, in Bangladesh, it is very difficult to identify the how we actually are associated with the positive people. Can you send me the three components, three qualities, or three actually the attributes that that's Yes, there's people that personality has a three, has, has a very positive quality, and I should associate with him for a long time and choose my mentor. That's actually my point. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Good how nice. to find the positive and how you know, the tricks? So, when we're coming back, Hither, you want to talk? Uh, okay. Yeah, so I think that's a great question, and it's a tough question to answer because you know we're all surrounded by people and sometimes people um, are not intending to be negative but but they are and uh, sometimes it's even family members and people that we love so what i like to think about is i like to think about it in terms of uh, ratio you know because you can't uh, hide uh, you know in a cave and only talk to nice people or positive people but what you want to try to do is that you want to allow yourself to ensure that the balance of positive to negative in your life is set properly. And when we talk about the science of flourishing, there was actually some researchers who found that you need to have a ratio of three to one positive to negative in order to flourish. So, you know, you need three to one positive thoughts. To, uh, negative uh, to have a, a flourishing thought life. But if you look around you relationally, you want to make sure that for every four people in your circle, that three of them are positive. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the way that you find these people, I think, is actually coming to events like this. And uh, by reaching out to people sometimes that you'll see here, maybe connecting with them on LinkedIn. I'm not sure if you guys are in a strict lockdown. Uh, you know, right now, maybe it's a connection online, maybe it's uh, going for a coffee. Uh, but I think we've got to make time for the people uh, that are going to help us to flourish and who are going to help us to thrive. And the more that we can do that, the more we will benefit as a result. Thank you so much. Wonderful. My pleasure. Anyone else? Uh, would you would you like to ask directly to Abe? Right. Yes, Open uh, I would like to ask a question. Thing is that uh, first of all, this is Muhammad Nasruddin Bishesh. I was uh, a telecom professional having seventeen years of experience. So recently, I have just switched from telecom to power sector. Uh, presently, I am working at management level at Rohima Pros Renewable Energy. So I was injured a lot, and uh, I would say I am very personally to attend the session, uh, what you have already delivered. And uh, I enjoyed a lot, and it was a very interactive session that Kamrul Sir was delivered for last uh, four days. So one thing that I need to know, and uh, I feel it is very much important for me. Thing is that while attending the sessions, during the sessions and after session, uh, whatever be the learning that I can adapt with those attributes very much. And uh, it is just continued for months, two months, three months. But I think it is supposed to be continued for longer time to get the uh, actual benefit. So what should be the things to be adapted to it, such that whatever be the learning, I can apply for longer time. Right, you thank know, you. So, great question. Yeah, it is a great question. Uh, so I've sent the slides to uh, Coach Camrul and uh, he can send those out. I think that a lot of the time, how we main maintain something is by continuing to marinate in it, you know? I think about it like tea. And, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, you love to drink tea. How many of you guys love to drink tea? I love to drink tea. And uh, if you really want the flavor of that tea to get into the, into the, the water, you really want to allow it to steep for a period of time. And I think that a lot of people aren't steeping long enough, <laughs> you know, so they hear something and it sounds exciting 
and then they move on to the next thing. And they wonder why they, they don't have great uh, results in their life. Well, it's because you really want it to steep. So every morning I get up, I, have, I get up at 3 a.m. every day and I, I have uh, tea. I have uh, beautiful tea, but I, I let it steep for 10 minutes. If I don't, this, the tea itself uh, doesn't taste nearly as good. It's not flavorful. And so, you know, also the recording from this, you could also take advantage of as well. And, uh, and then I think uh, the more you can uh, sort of steep in these things, the more you can invest in them, the more it will become a part of your reality. You know, if I want to change, there's no quick fix. It always has to take the time and the effort. But, uh, you know, um, I'll tell you, the, the beautiful thing about our world is we have these devices today. Uh, you know, if you can imagine, I mean, most of us were old enough to remember a time when we didn't have them. And now you have uh, almost the whole world at your fingertips in terms of knowledge and uh, the capacity to learn and grow. So please uh, take advantage of that as much as you can. Uh, one thing I can share, uh, actually I'm associated with Franklin Covey also. And uh, I was so fortunate to work with Stephen Covey. So actually he told me that just fix one person after the session, might be your wife, might be your children, might be your friend, whatever you have learned, just teach him. So by teaching, you can learn. So that is the simple poss possibility of learning. Thank you. It's very good. Thank you. Thank much you. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Moving ahead to the next question Thank here, uh, Mr. Shanjai Chandra. Uh, Shandai Chandra Hachacharya, please, uh, can you switch on video and ask a question? Yes, Mr. Shanjai, can you hear me? If not, uh, uh, anyone, anyone else, please uh, feel free to ask. Uh, why flourishing, what is flourishing, uh, so how it can help you. So asking on, on behalf of student. Yes, Sanja, I can see you right now. Okay, so. okay. Okay, here, here I am, here I am. Uh, thank you, uh, Kamrul Bhai, for this wonderful session. And I love uh, Abe Brown's presentation. So I'm, uh, uh, first and foremost, I am very much grateful to God for having a wonderful family. And he stressed very clearly on having a good family. And I'm blessed on this. My children is on my lap. So I would like to know one thing that I... I have a well-defined purpose by all means, uh, but I'm not getting to change my life uh, onwards. So um, he will advise us to follow our purpose for uh, making our life uh, better. So thank you, Abe, uh, in advance. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I uh, love uh, seeing your, your uh, child there uh, in your home and your family. And God bless you. And so um, I appreciate the resilience. I, I think that resilience is one of these things that we talk about. But, you know, um, part of resilience is what they call a, a growth mindset. And I'm sure mentor Ashif has studied this and Coach Kamrul you know, the opposite of a growth mindset is a fixed mindset. And when you have a fixed mindset, you know, what happens is you, you don't feel like anything in your life can change. And you feel like I was born this way. I'm stuck with all these limitations. And even seeing your child there, like, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, I have, I have children and, you know, just how important it is to instill in our kids, in our families, in ourselves, a growth mindset, because I can continue to grow and adapt and evolve. And so can you. And that's the wonderful thing about this, that we have uh, all the opportunity that we need, but the, the greatest uh, muscle that we have is, is in our mind. And our mind uh, literally can change our whole world just with that reality. So I hope that helps. And uh, thank you for your great question and for sharing a little bit of your lovely family. Thank you, Abe. And for the audience, please uh, take a note. Our next uh, episode with Abe is coming on, uh, I believe it's 28th of 
July. So that is Wednesday. And that day, Abe is going to talk about the power of coaching to maximize your performance, right? The power of coaching, because who doesn't want to maximize the performance? I mean, raise your hand. Uh, do you want really to improve your performance, improvise, and then efficiency, effectiveness, and get the result? 10X, maybe 100X, right? Who knows, right? In one day, you may attain this in it's just following a one-person rule, uh, one-person improvement in each and every day. I mean, do think, uh, I mean, this session as awesome as it is, and I believe the next session is going to be as good as it is today. So I really want to thank Abe. I know your time, uh, one hour today ends here, right? You know, that's what the Canadian time is, right? It's not the Bangladesh time. So we are to stop full on dot because that's the, uh, I mean, professionalism we want to learn, we want to share. And I want to thank you, Abe, for the wonderful time and looking forward to see all of you towards our next episode, 28 July at 8 p.m. This is sharp, 9 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Stay well, thank stay you. healthy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Bye, Abe. Have a good day.